Welcome to Fix It Home Improvement, covering projects that every homeowner should know and great products for home and garden. Hi, I'm JC, and this is where we share weekly home improvement tips. I'm here with my co-host, Cindy. Hello, JC. Hi, Cindy. Today, we're going to be talking about bed bugs. We also have an interview with Lance from Bear Advanced. They've got a new bed bug killer and a home pest killer. So, bed bugs have been around for a while. Some of the archaeological digs in Egypt, they mm-hmm. find that they find some of the fossilized remains of bed bugs over 3,000 years old. Wow. In Greece, around 400 BC, they started to write about some of the problems with bed bugs. And then Pliny the Elder, he Who's was at, he was at Roman author uh, around 77 AD, wrote about bed bugs and how he hates them. <laughs> And then in ancient Rome, it was what was interesting is bed bug bugs were, were so invasive in houses that they were able to collect them. They were that thick yeah. in houses, and they thought it was actually helpful to treat snake bites. Huh. So they would make this brew of bed bugs, and if you had a snake bite or if you had an ear infection, the ancient Romans thought that it was good to drink boiled bed bugs. Did it help? Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if they thought it helped, you uh-huh. know, I'm, I'm sure it helped somebody. Uh, they all died. Yeah. Nobody knows. <laughs> In the uh, U.S., they don't see any fossilized remains earlier than the early colonists. So they think that the early colonists brought them over, and that's how they, they came here to the States. You're welcome, Native Americans. <laughs> yeah, another thing we brought over. <laughs> But it was, it's funny, it got really bad and uh, until the early 50s when DDT, they started to use it. So in uh, especially some of these early hotels, the bed bug problem was so bad, they started using DDT. And I guess they just saturated yeah. some, of the, some of these hotels with DDT. And for cockroaches, bed bugs, it completely eradicated them. Yeah. And over the next you know couple of decades, we did not have a bed bug problem. Yeah, everybody so, just had cancer. Right, right, right. So in 1972, they actually banned DDT because of that. Uh-huh. Then, you know, they found that some of the bed bugs, the small colonies of bed, bed bugs were resistant to some of these chemicals that they were using. And then over the next couple of decades, because of international travel, we started seeing this bed bug problem again and now, in the starting in the 90s, in Miami, New York, San Francisco, it really started to explode. In the UK, also, bed bugs are really a problem. One thing we worry about is in our homes getting bed bugs because they are one of the most difficult bugs to get rid of. Really? And it really takes a strategy and a plan. So what are bed bugs? What do they look like? And most importantly, do they bite? <laughs> yeah, sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. So they're they're a little beetle looking thing. They almost look like a little tick. Mm-hmm. They're about a quarter when they're full grown. They're only about a quarter inch, and they're they're real. They're very flat. They're kind of a reddish brown, and they don't have wings. Yeah. And what's interesting about them is they very seldom carry disease. But the problem is when they bite you, it can become infected. And some people are actually very sensitive to it, so they really get a, a bad rash. So is it like you're allergic to it? You must be releasing some histamine, yeah. Uh-huh. Bed bugs feed on blood, and what's interesting is they, they do it by slicing through your skin, and they force a feeding tube into you, and that's how they, they draw the blood. So they inject saliva into the opening, which contains an anesthetic so you can't feel it, and uh-huh. an anticoagulant so that the blood keeps flowing. And then so they're, they're using one part of their, their piercing jaws to do this, and then another part of it has this hollow tube that they shove into your skin, and it draws the blood, and they sit there and they feed on you for about five minutes. Oh, gross. And then once they're full, and you can see them kind of swell up, and then once they're full, they take off, they retreat to like a, a hiding spot. Mm-hmm. So they're very difficult to kill because they they only come out at night. They're drawn to warmth, carbon dioxide. Mm-hmm. So they're drawn to humans. They love to feed on human blood. And then once they're content, they try to find a dark space to, to hide. So they're hiding primarily in your bedding, in your mattress. In fact, one statistic by a company that did research on all of these homes and hotels that were infected, 60% of them were in the box springs. 22% of the bed bugs were in the mattresses. 
13% in sofas and chairs, let's say in a bedroom. Mm -hmm. And then 4% was on the bed frame. The other 1% were in cracks and crevices, outlets. Because they're small, and what's wild about bed bugs is they can actually go for months in cooler areas. They can go up to a year without having to feed again. So they feed on you, Uh and now they can go and hide and kind of lay dormant Mm -hmm. for months. So you're, you know, if you're using sprays and you think you've solved a problem, you can have a lot of bed bugs just hiding in wait. They come, they feed. They need to feed to reproduce. So when they feed on you, now they're going to start laying eggs. And the average female can produce three or four eggs a day if she's continually feeding. In her lifetime, which is about a year, they can lay 500 eggs. Oh. <laughs> and, and then each one of those female offspring can mm-hmm. lay 500. So they say it's just amazing how they can kind of take over mm-hmm. a house, or especially a hotels right, you know, yeah. and apartment buildings are, are really a problem. So how do you know if you have bed bugs? Well, usually, well, my mom always told a great story when I was young. We, uh, you know, my I was born out in Nebraska in a small little town, and every year we'd go back and then we'd visit the relatives out mm-hmm. there. And we had some relatives in South Dakota that had a farm. And my mom used to always say, hey, we're going to go visit, you know, Aunt Nellie. But, you know, make sure you don't lay anything down or anything because I remember growing up that she had bed bugs. And so we would spend the night and I would wake up in the morning and there'd be blood all over the sheets and the (laughs) pillowcase. And she said I was always just terrified to go to Aunt Nellie's. So, you know, you can see evidence of if you really look closely at your mattress and all your bedding, you can see them hiding in the the little seams, cracks and crevices around your your mattress and, and bed spring. But a lot of people see evidence of, you know, blood on the sheets and pillowcases. You're going to have sometimes a rash Mm -hmm. over your body, small, tiny little bites. They almost look, on a lot of people, it just looks like a mosquito bite. Right. But some people have a a reaction, Mm -hmm. so it it becomes bad. Are there parts of your body that they like to bite? Anywhere, any exposed, anywhere (laughs) anywhere there's blood, (laughs) they like that part. Yuck. They say that the best way to identify it, though, is to call your local extension agent. So you can you can go online and just look for the local extension agent in your zip code area, and you're going to send them a picture. So with your smartphone, you'll take a picture. You want to get one of these sticky traps that... I was gonna col- say, a picture of what? A picture of these insects you trap. Uh-huh. So, you, so if you think you have bed bugs, you're going to want to put these sticky traps down around your bed and it's going to catch them, Mm -hmm. and then you send a picture, or you take it, if it's close, you take it to your local extension agent, and they'll identify it immediately. And obviously, if they're big enough and you can look at it online, that's how you're going to confirm it. So are these sticky traps covered? Because if you have pets, you're not going to want to leave those out. Yeah, they have some. You know, we had, at the hardware store, we had those. In fact, you don't have to get one that says bed bug trap or bed bug alert monitor. You can get the ones that are covered for, like, cockroaches and crawling insects Mm -hmm. because it's basically just a sticky piece of cardboard or a plastic tray. So they have some traps that are covered so, you know, kids and pets can't easily get into it. But that's what we're trying to use to, to find them because bed bugs really don't prefer pets. They really like human blood. Hmm. Now that you've confirmed that you have bed bugs, okay. what do you do? So now it's a plan. We have to have a systematic approach on how we're first going to attack the room, which they usually congregate in the bedrooms because that's their source of food. We don't want to throw out any of our bedding or furniture because the problem is if you've got bed bugs and cracks and crevices around, most of them are probably going to be right around or in the bed. But How far do they move? They can move quite a bit, evidently. Uh, they'll move through apartments and condos and hotels. Mm-hmm. So they're pretty good. And and because they can go so long without eating, yeah. they can travel quite a ways you know, before their next meal. So we have to have a strategy that really is going to last months. Again, one of the most difficult insects to kill and eradicate from your home. So we have to have a, a very long-term strategy. We want to first use sprays, and we'll go over all the the different 
chemicals and things in, in a couple of minutes here, but just the overall strategy is we're going to thoroughly take apart any of the bedding, look for ev any evidence of the bed bugs in the folds of the mattresses and the mm -hmm. box spring. We're going to vacuum thoroughly. If you have a very good, strong quality vacuum with a HEPA filter, we're going to really go after everything thoroughly, uh, cracks in the corners, and then we're going to bag up. If you have a, a bagged vacuum, then you're going to get that out of the house as quickly mm -hmm. as possible. If you have one without, you're going to open this up outside and put it in the waste, close it up in plastic bags. And then we want to strip the bed, the box spring. We want to buy these beddings. It actually encapsulates the bed itself and the box spring. So it's, it's called total encasement bags, and it's designed to completely trap any bed bugs in there yeah. And then it prevents new bed bugs from getting on the bedding. Mm. So very interesting. So we're encapsulating this, and you're going to leave this on for a minimum of 18 months. <laughs> Isn't that wild? Yeah. So then we're going to treat the bed frame, the headboard, anything around the bed, and we're going to use a variety of different different chemicals. And 70% of these bed bugs are going to be right around the bed, close to this blood source. We're going to, again, vacuum everywhere, pick up anything under the bed. We don't want anywhere where bugs can hide. We're really mm -hmm. going to do a thorough cleaning of the bedroom. And then we're going to systematically get chemicals down all in the cracks, crevices, baseboard. We're going to remove outlet covers if you have smoke detectors in the room. Mm -hmm. I guess just one word of caution. You never want to use any liquid sprays. If you're removing the, the cover from an outlet or a switch, that's where you'd want to use powders, something right. dry. You never mm -hmm. want to use any liquids near electric. And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to take all of the washable items now, throw them in the washing machine. You want the hottest water, over 120 degrees, for at least 30 minutes. And you want to dry all of your bedding for at least 30 minutes on the highest setting mm -hmm. in your dryer. And then if you can either rent a steamer at a rental place, or if you have a, a steamer, you can buy them pretty inexpensive. You set it to around 160 to 180 degrees. And any type of furniture in your bedroom, you're going to steam it thoroughly to try to kill the bed bugs and the eggs. Then we're going to take the bed and we're going to create an island. So we want the bed completely away from the walls. We want it pulled away so that it's setting by itself. We want these bags to encapsulate the mattress and the box spring. Mm -hmm. And then what you want to get are these, they're called bed bug interceptors. <laughs> they're little cups that you put under the legs of the frame. Okay. for your bed and so in this you're going to put diatomaceous earth mm -hmm. or you're going to put some bed bug chemical so if they try to climb up so they're going to be trying to get to you <laughs> and we want to put these little cups underneath the legs of the bed I would use diatomaceous earth because it's completely non-toxic. Then you're going to make sure when you reset your bed, nothing touches the floor. So you can't have any of your sheets or any anything on your bed can't come in contact with the wall or the floor. So they can't fly. They don't really jump. You know, right. So you're creating this island, and we're systematically going to be attacking this room for months until we rid it of bed bugs. Hmm. So why don't we discuss some products that are on the market for killing bed bugs why don't we start with the uh safer ones first okay or less toxic so the least toxic in fact non-toxic is diatomaceous earth so this is the fossilized remains of hard-shelled algae it's microscopic and in fact if you look at it under a microscope it looks like pieces of shattered glass mm -hmm. and that's exactly what it does to insects so this is great for all types of insects and it comes in these little puffers. So some of the companies, like we carry J.T. Eaton, Harris, Safer, those companies all carry diatomaceous earth to go after insects. It comes in a bottle, and it's, it's a squeezy bottle, so they're never going to be filled. You want that air space so you can shake this bottle, and then you puff it into cracks and crevices. What you don't want to do is build huge piles of this. You right. want very thin because insects will actually try to avoid a pile. <laughs> like, if you, like if you have a, a puff it under and you, you know, because they used to always say take a teaspoon. They used to have those canisters 
that you would take diatomaceous earth, and they said, just grab a, a, a spoon and just dispense it. But they found that insects will actually try to go around it. So you want to shake this bottle. There's air space. You want to puff it in cracks and crevices. So this well, is where you should wear a dust mask? Wear a dust mask because you don't want to breathe this in. But if, you, if it touches you, it, it isn't absorbed into your skin. It's completely non-toxic because mm-hmm. it's, it's just mechanically what it's doing is it's getting into their exoskeleton. And as they move, it actually slices them up. If they ingest any, it cuts up their the inside of the insect itself and it will it will rip off the waxy coating protective coating that insects have so they cannot build an immunity to it which is wonderful so it's non toxic it's mechanical they can't build an immunity and it's safe around your house it's still kind of gross the yeah. way you describe it <laughs> but the only key the thing with this is you have to keep it dry you can't put it anywhere where there's any moisture mm-hmm. or high humidity so it has to stay dry and this is what you would use inside your plate covers for outlets and switches you would puff some of this in there if you've got insects that potentially could be moving around or hiding beneath those cover plates so i love diatomaceous earth i think that should be part of your plan for killing any type of insects to have this blown into the under the baseboards and anywhere that you Is have it safe for pets absolutely yeah it's it's completely non-toxic another thing that which is interesting for years they used to always sell boric acid which is very low toxicity for humans because boron is found you know naturally in the earth it's a naturally occurring element so boric acid is very popular for killing cockroaches and it's excellent for killing cockroaches the problem is uh, these university studies have found that it does not work it's not effective for bed bugs because bed bugs the mouth parts that they have are designed specifically for getting blood Mm -hmm. and they don't groom so cockroaches they'll walk through this boric acid and then they'll groom themselves almost like a cat right so they ingest this and that's how boric acid kills insects so silverfish cockroach is fantastic to use boric acid but boric acid they found will not work for bed bugs why don't we talk about some sprays so the least toxic are going to be anything that says pyrethrum or pyrethrin and that, that? and that's from the pyrethrum daisy, so it's that chrysanthemum flower. Uh-huh. So it's considered non-toxic if you use it as directed, because this is coming straight from this flower, and highly toxic to insects and especially bed bugs. What's interesting is these are continually evolving. They say that the flower itself, as bugs develop an immunity. Mm -hmm. The flower actually changes the chemical compounds, and so they're constantly staying ahead of these bugs so that the bugs don't kill the flower. And it's just interesting how some of the synthetic versions of these pyrethrins, so if you see something that says pyrethroid or it says permethrin, these are synthetic versions of these natural pyrethrins. Mm -hmm. They actually, bugs over a period, over decades, will actually build an immunity to the synthetic version. And so these companies actually have to change the formula (laughs) over time. But if you use any of these sprays that are just pyrethrin, it's constantly evolving by itself. Do you have any companies? So there's, so J.T. Eaton uh, carries this. There's uh, a few different companies that carry the all-natural one. In fact, the company EchoSmart has a really nice line of all natural, uh, non toxic sprays for bed bugs, and they use natural organic oils and some of the pyrethrins. So, then once we get into the other chemicals, if you see delta methrin or if you see any of the pyrethroids, these I would make sure that I'm finding something that says EPA registered on the packaging uh-huh. because they've done research and they found it to be effective. So, you know, you're going to get a good chemical and it's going to do, the, do a good job. It's just important that you're following the instructions on there so that there's not a toxicity problem. Some you can use on luggage, some you can't, depending on whether it's water-soluble or it's Mm oil-based. So just read the packaging and you're going to get a real good feel for it. And a lot of these companies, like Raid has a product for bed bugs, around $8, Sprayway, Bonide, not very expensive. But I would always use, when we're attacking our bedroom, I would probably use a two-chemical approach. I'd probably use, if it were me, I'd use these pyrethrins, and I'd go after everything first with a spray. And then in all the cracks and crevices, I would use the diatomaceous earth. Mm -hmm. 
Before you had mentioned those bed covers, do you have any companies? Two of the highest rated. One was Protect a Bed, and the other one was Sentry, and they'll run you between sixty and ninety dollars. If you're traveling, what can you do to protect your stuff? So a couple of these chemicals have uh, like these tiny sprays that you can spray on your luggage. So some of the natural oils they use, bed bugs are irritated by it, so they're going to keep away from your luggage. And then they actually have something called a bug zip. It's a luggage and clothing bag. Hmm. So when you get to the hotel, you pull this out of your uh, bag real quick and you cover it and zip it locked. <laughs> and it's designed so bed bugs can't get into it. So you keep all your stuff in your, yeah, in man. your suitcase. You, <laughs> yeah, you keep it covered. Especially if you're going to New York. In fact, I, I guess that bed bugs have such a unique odor, it kind of smells like overripe strawberries hmm. or cilantro. <laughs> and uh, they've trained dogs to sniff them out, and they say they're over 95% accurate. So they take these dogs into hotels, mm -hmm. and they'll find an area that they'll start barking <laughs> and pointing, and there's yeah. an area that's infested, and they'll they'll attack these rooms. And, and you know, they're, it, again, it's a very long process, mm -hmm. systematic process of trying to get rid of these bed bugs. So a lot of these bottles that we sell are really small bottles. Okay. You know, how, how much of this are you using? Like if, if you're going to spray it on your mattress or... They want a th very thin coat. In fact, they don't want you to saturate uh, mm -hmm. with the synthetics. Now, some of the pyrethrins don't have that same restriction. So, again, you're going to follow the instructions because a lot of these products are considered low or non-toxic when used as directed. Okay. So it's very important. Each manufacturer is different and each chemical is different. So it's important, like most of the stuff we talk about, is re take the time to read the instructions. So we had an interview with Lance from Bear Advanced and he has some information on their new bug spray and bed bug spray. Lance, how you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? Real good. Hey, uh, Cindy and I were talking about uh, bed bugs this week and we were curious if we could get a little information on your home pest bed bug killer and also you have the uh, home pest insect killer. Yeah, that's correct. These are innovative products from uh, Bear Advanced. The home pest bed bug and flea killer, like the home pest insect killer, are both continuous spray products. It's really neat because it allows you to um, hold the product upside down and get a nice even spray from it, particularly for the home pest insect killer. It really makes it nice for you know getting underneath eaves, eaves and around doors and anywhere you get baseboards where you kind of got to get under something. So it's really a useful product and every bit of the product comes out there's no any types of uh, things come out of the can you don't want so it's really innovative and the nice thing about it is it has two active ingredients so man the most active ingredient the most effective against bed bugs for homeowners and now I see that it says that it kills the pyrethroid resistant bed bugs yeah that's right that's what I mean when it has it has two active ingredients the other ingredient is imidacloprid and um, so that's also will kill the uh, insects that have developed any resistance to the pyrethrins and with the home pest insect killer that's something that you can use indoor outdoor is there a... that, that's correct it's really most useful indoors okay where you're doing spot treatments uh, we all it can be used outdoors. I use it along doorways and windows and areas that I know where the pests are going to be coming in. But, you know, if you really got a large house, we have other products in the Bear Advance line, uh, specifically complete insect control for soil and turf. And um, it comes okay. in a ready to spray product, hose end sprayer, which is when you're trying to create a barrier on the outside, which is so important when you're trying to keep pests out of your house. What do you recommend? Let's say that I wanted to have a border control for insects. What product would you recommend? Well, I would recommend if you want to use it outside, and that this product, the complete insect killer, cannot be used inside. Um, but that's the hose end sprayer. And, you know, it takes a consistent and a dedicated approach to really keep the insects out of your house. Um, sure. You want, I mean, it's common sense stuff like keeping your kitchen and your home really nice and clean so you don't attract a lot of insect pests, being careful with where you put your pet food, uh, sealing up any crevices and cracks where you know the insects are getting in being careful where you place your firewood. But the nice thing about the complete product is that it can it puts a nice wide spray out so you can spray all the way around the foundation, around windows, around doors and and really create a barrier that'll keep the insects from coming in. And now where's your area of expertise, Lance? Oh, I'm a horticulturalist and I'm the Bear Advanced Garden Expert, but I've also kind of specialized in pest control products over the years. I've done a lot of different gardening. I've been 
uh, writing gardening books for over 40 years. And, wow, that's great. Yeah. What type of books? Well, I'm senior editor on the Sunset Western Garden book. I have written Rose, Roses for Dummies, Lawn Carrots for Dummies. <laughs> really? Uh, wow. I've worked on a number of those. Yeah, and also a number of books on fruit growing. I've done a number of books on citrus. We live on a 17-acre citrus ranch in California. So wow, all sorts of different subjects. Yeah, very interesting. Well, we would love to talk to you. You know, if you have time, maybe come spring. Cindy and I will be talking a lot about the different gardening projects and lawn and garden. So if you have time, I would love to talk to you again. I'd be glad to. If I wanted to find out more about Bear Advanced products, where would I go? You go to bearadvanced.com. All right. Very good. Well, I appreciate your time, Lance. Great. And I got to remind everybody also to make sure that you read and follow the label instructions on any insecticides that you use. Very good. Yeah, we always emphasize read the instructions. That's very important. All right. I appreciate it. Thank you, Lance. Thank you. I enjoyed talking to Lance, and he's got a lot of knowledge on some of the lawn and garden products, too, so hopefully we can get him uh, to give us an interview this spring. That's great. So, another disgusting, gross episode <laughs> I love about the bugs. bugs. Ugh, blood-sucking bugs. That's great. Tear through your skin and yeah, suck your while blood. while you sleep. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Right. So psychologically, you know, bed bugs, it's more than just because they really don't transmit disease. They take mm-hmm. very, you know, little blood. Who came up with that saying that you say to kids, sleep tight, don't let the bed bugs bite. Yeah, more trauma. So yeah. it's, it's really psychologically, you know, because you're just, anti- you don't get a good night. How terrible. You know, you wouldn't get a good night's sleep because you're anticipating these bugs crawling all over you. Yeah. Sucking your blood. Terrible. All right. So... If you'd like to subscribe to our podcast and hear more about bugs, you can subscribe on iTunes or Stitcher. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a review. You can check out our home improvement videos on our YouTube channel, Fix It Home Improvement. You can subscribe there as well. If you'd like to contact us, you can email us at fixitpodcast at gmail.com. Thank you for listening. Talk to you next week.